Welcome back to the channel, lads and ladies, and welcome to a quiet house. At least, as quiet as it gets these days. I have my beautiful wife sleeping peacefully on the couch behind me. I have my two-year-old toddler protesting grumpily about bedtime through the wall. I mean, it's not like... anyway, whatever. Two layers of double drywall and I can still feel the resentment soaking through. <laughs> anyway, she got a... She got a bottle... She, well, I mean, a, a, a big girl bottle, like a, like a juice... Uh, vitamin water bottle. She got story time and a little bit of play time and everything. But she wants more. Anyway. If you're looking for more, you came to the right place. There's probably more video than you can handle in one sitting with this one. It's going to be a long video. Your attention may wander, but I implore you. Keep Frosty as a Cone of Arc gets a nice hit on a flying Leo. Bounces a shot off his highly angled turret armor. Probably from yet another Leo 120. And that is your introduction to Cone of Arc in the Merkava Mark II B. Against every golden thing on the Axis team. <laughs> yeah, the Axis. It's Israel versus Germany Part 2, Electric Boogaloo. And Cone is going to give them that good shalom <laughs> in any event I am very happy to be featuring a triple ace gameplay from Cone of Arc that you are now watching in the Merkava Mark II B event vehicle I didn't call it a premium did I it's not a premium it's a collector's vehicle but it's not it doesn't have that sweet premium status and that's probably one of the reasons I'll be ditching mine as soon as I can sell it. In any event, Kona's going to do quite well here. It's nighttime at my house so I'm trying to be a little bit of a smooth Toshio tonight to not disturb my wife too much. I already have heard her grumpily repositioning. <laughs> she didn't ask for me to make a video while she's getting much much needed sleep. She worked hard today. I was exhausted today <laughs> because mostly Brooklyn, uh, the two-year-old, but a little bit the one-year-old as well. Uh, they really, they really wore me out. <laughs> and Cone wearing down the enemy team. Premiums all, premiums all. <laughs> There's a Leo A1 A1, I think, or was that the OF40? Uh, what's that? Yeah, the Italian, effectively a Leo A1, A1, uh, yeah, whatever. The best thing a steak can wear. <laughs> I'm being weird tonight, but some of you may recognize a Cone of Arc for his War Thunder Beams series. Uh, he started making these uh, quite a while ago and his latest meme compilation is quality material much like many of his meme compilations. Uh, the first few you can tell that he was learning things and you know what you go back to my old videos and I had a lot to learn too. <laughs> And his quality is always a lot higher than mine. I'll try to remember to put a link to his YouTube channel in the description of this video. And I encourage you uh, to give his channel a watch if you haven't checked that out yet. Also, since we're on the subject, while we watch Cone playing the meta using the Great Survivability, which is somewhat unique to the... I almost called it the Magok, but it's the Merkava. Yes, even higher tier. Uh, the Merkava has much better survivability under the right circumstances than many of the vehicles that it can face at its tier 
at this uh, 9.0 to 10.0 BR up around 10.0 you start to see armor mattering a little bit under the right circumstances but again it, even so there's usually a hole around the cannon breach <laughs> as you see there with yet another leo 120 lots and lots of premiums at this tier and the merkava in the hands of a skilled and tactically minded player very much at home that? with thermal view and as i mentioned much better survivability than the competition the Merkava Mark II B's relative lack of mobility compared to, again, the competition where it seems like everything is a Leo A1 at this tier. It's not a bad vehicle with a stabilizer and a, a lawn dart that can punch through pretty much anything you would face from pretty much any range. Easy to aim, easy to acquire targets, as easy as you can expect. And once again you can actually survive a few hits making this something of a special object in the game that's not to say you're guaranteed to do well this is a very competitive tier and you can have a lot of poor matches and harsh experiences even if you do everything right Cone here showing us a good balance of aggressiveness, getting into the right positions at the right time, as well as tactical mindedness and defensive strategy. You can see he's pushing forward with two other tanks, and in a game mode where everybody has a laser beam that can poke holes in your ship, it's even better of an idea to move with a group that's not always what's going to be happening in this match but it's a good decision when you can avail yourself of the opportunity another thing the Merkava Mark II B has going for it other than a slight increase in armor with some ERA on the turret that won't see a lot of action as everybody is using lawn darts anyway yeah, maybe it can save you from catastrophic destruction when you get hit by an ATGM. Who's to say? But another thing that proves more useful more often is the plethora of smoke grenades that you have access to along similar lines to other Israeli tanks that we see in the game. And we've seen a good amount of Israeli high-tier vehicles, starting with the fantastic 477, 77 battle rating, uh, Magach, right? The Magach? Am I getting this right? <laughs> That's right. And then you have the 83 Shot Cal, which has fantastic armament and gun handling, and yet falls short in both mobility and protection for that battle rating. Interesting vehicles. Clearly upgrades over the contemporary counterparts made out of the same or equivalent equipment. Uh, the Merkava, of course, a famous tank today. And uh, a vehicle that looks slightly different in its more modern variations that are sure to be coming to the game in the future. All of that is to say, I couldn't give two fiddly farts for this high-tech nonsense. I feel like the real skilled gameplay shows up better when you have to estimate ranges more accurately, when there's a bit of a lob to your rounds, if you will, when angling armor matters more, and when you can't zip from one side of the map to another all nimbly bimbly. I got nothing against high tier and top tier. It just ain't for me. And I'm really looking forward to other Israeli tanks. The Israelis got their hands on T-34-85s. The Israelis got their hands on T-44s. The Israelis got their hands on a lot of Shermans and a lot of other stuff. And everything they touched, they tinkered with. They tested. They outfitted in interesting ways. 
and I would love to see more neat Israeli modifications as well as other countries modifications to more commonly known World War II and post World War II vehicles but if you're looking for top tier action Call of Duty style <laughs> this is about as fast paced and wild reflex uh, snakes with laser beams on their heads as you can get in the game of War Thunder at least on the ground <laughs> we're not looking at closing speeds of 2,000 miles per hour here but things do move rather a bit more quickly than they do at the lower tiers although from Merkaba's point of view still winning the war at a brisk trot at the most <laughs> it tends to not zip around the battlefield quite so much as other tanks but with good weight distribution and a reasonably powerful power plant and again that survivability where you can shrug off a shot from well an Italian 40 millimeter is not quite as deadly <laughs> as some of the other weapons you could face on the battlefield but can't blame a man for trying now can you what was I saying so this is going to be a long video as I mentioned I probably should have mentioned at the beginning that this is going to be two replays both of which you're really going to want to see we have meta Dave with a triple ace in the tiger that is the tiger tank and you are watching another 15 kill match as it's going to turn out to be. I know spoilers, but sometimes a little spoiler sauce can season the roast oh so nicely and make you wonder, how is it going to pull this off? And I'll tell you now, with style. With style. And in between, I'll tell you a little bit about an old love of mine from back in the day. But we'll get to that when we get to that. That's right, it's another two replays and a PSA video. I liked that format from last time, and I keep on getting replays from you all, so I'm happy to share those uh, as much as possible. If it means that I end up making longer videos and I start to lose some of you guys halfway through or 10 minutes in, well, that's just the way it's going to be. I'm sorry about that. I just don't have the ability to make as many videos as I used to make when I didn't have my hands so full of toddler. <laughs> oh man, uh, my girls are getting so busy. Little baby Zoe is one year old and she's doing everything she can to catch up to big sis Brooklyn who is two and counting. Zoe's almost one. She's days away. Zoe is a studier. She loves to examine things closely. She breaks out the little probing fingernail and she scritchy scratches at things and peels away the layers. She uh, pulls her fingers back and slaps things with her palm to get a good feel for what's going on there. <laughs> and she studies. She watches. And if she notices me noticing her, oh, there's a big, huge smile that comes with that. She is a girl. <laughs> but uh, I think she's going to be a really special kind of woman when she grows up. This enemy, Ostwind, we don't know what will be in its future or what could have been because it is now a fireworks display. <laughs> as the magical lawn dart goes through two racks of ammunition and sets fire to the rain of anti-aircraft munitions that were intended in an anti-aircraft roll. Only 10 kills and four base caps with his first kill. Pish tosh. You, you could have done better, Cone. <laughs> no, that was a fantastic display. It is extremely rare that I'll get even three or four kills at this battle rating. I 
do not do well and I tend to not play quite aggressively enough. Uh, another thing is sometimes these tabs pop up after somebody dies and I happened to have been taking care of my toddler while I was recording the <laughs> the replay here. So welcome to jingles mode where none of the taps are closed. <laughs> you, guys, you guys get the reference? Jingles just made another replay video recently and it was fantastic. Uh, he said we weren't going to guess how it ended and I guessed how it was going to end. Just, just because he told me it was going to be unusual. I was like, okay. Somebody's getting rammed. <laughs> anyway, uh, another explosion. This time leading to a hull break. Isn't it interesting to see how that mechanic shakes out in War Thunder? <laughs> so inconsistent. So it's telling you about baby Zoe. She's a studier. She pays attention. She really tries to figure out what's going on and how things work. Brooklyn, the two-year-old, the toddler. She's very busy as well, but she's busy making things move. She's a rocker. She's a rock and roller. She always has been. Before she was even born, I told people, this girl's a rocker. <laughs> and she is. She works hard. She goes hard. She's self-motivated. She gets a lot of work done. She always has several projects that she's working on. And she doesn't pay any attention to what she's doing. <laughs> I always have to tell her, stop. Look at what's going on. Think for a second. Okay, now talk. Because <laughs> she'll just start yelling for something that she already has. Ooh, there's an interesting topic. How much do you want the Merkava Mark II B? Now, we already have a Merkava in the game. Another event vehicle. Another vehicle that I sold. I was not interested in pursuing that battle rating. Do we already have very similar vehicles to the Merkava in the game? Uh, you could make the case for the Abrams, although it sits at a higher battle rating. The XM1 Abrams is also similar with significantly reduced armor protection, yet still much higher overall survivability than many of its counterparts. But in the Merkava 2B, you really have the best of everything America has had access to up to this point all in one package with the notable exception of somewhat lower than optimum mobility. Tanking yet another shot and I know this is a respawn vehicle and yet showing the survivability of this tank over the XM1 Absolutely. There is no smoke system of any kind available for XM1. Kind of ridiculous. But there are other redeeming factors to the tank. Mobility. Mobility and firepower. Yet, here we are, winding down a match with already 12 kills. Picking up a hit on another Leo who's sitting in his own smoke stewing in his own juices as Cone just opens up with all the machine guns. That's another thing I love about yeah, all of the Israeli lines. tanks I've so seen in the game. And that'll be and it. That, we've also unlocked the that was 15 kills. <laughs> and now we're hearing Ash in the background. Sorry about that. But part of this recording for today's PSA was taken while I was listening to some delightful background sounds. And here we have the JU-87. This is the one with the 20 mils. I keep forgetting what the designation for this thing is, but I had a lot of fun with one of my oldest custom camouflages that I made from way back in the day. 
I loved getting a feel for the JU-87 again. It's sort of a fish out of water when it comes to its place in the game. But you have one or two good bomb drops, albeit in a very slow moving aircraft. You need to be sure to set up your bomb timer or get really good at dive bombing. It has two great wing mounted um, MG-10... Uh, eh. What are they called? MG-151s? With a ridiculous amount of ammunition. I mean ridiculous. And so it's just a lot of fun. It was great to fly the Stuka. And my advice is learn to fly the Stuka over again if you've played it in the past. It's no IL-2, but it is a barrel full of fun. And when it does well, or even just a little bit well, it's all the more satisfying for the hoops you have to jump through to make that work with a Stuka. Don't, don't just go for the suicide bomb. Have a good old time and become a real Stuka ace. Hey, maybe one of you guys could send me a Stuka ace gameplay. <laughs> I'd love to see that. I think I've featured an ace game from somebody in Air RB with the cannon pods and that is always a meme a minute with that setup. And now we come to another vehicle that is certainly past its prime. The OG Tiger, this is not the first model, but the better model with the most important feature being the rounded over cupola on top and a not insignificant amount of lower frontal plate protection provided by some add-on track as well as a little bit of add-on track to the turret that rarely makes a difference. What does still matter with this tank is the decent mobility. Uh, not bad at all for a heavy tank and decent even in terms of a medium tank which is the way I would recommend playing the Tiger. Treat it like something of a sluggish medium and you'll do well. And Meta Dave is going to do well. Yet another member of the Cone Cult, as you can see, making his pairing with Papa Cone of Arc all the merrier. You can see Meta Dave angling his frontal plate, peeking around the corner, and reconsidering. The Tiger has significantly less survivability than it used to enjoy, as the the meta of War Thunder has shifted increasingly toward lower rank post-war vehicles that the Tiger can commonly face that have things like heat FS or even high velocity rounds that can punch right through its flat armor like it's nothing, even at high angles. Other tanks that it can face can punch through its lower sides and front and rear with little difficulty, but uh, they do suffer if you angle the Tiger just right, and that is a skill that is worth investing in. Meta Dave, however, focusing more on getting the first shot on the enemy by setting himself up in a good position and waiting for foes to come around the corner. You can see he's backed away far enough that he won't be seen by a corner peeking. Oh, Sherman. <laughs> Sherman 76 takes a round to the upper frontal plate after either shooting one of Meta Dave's allies or missing his shot as Dave uh, peeked and then snuck back into a defensible position. Now, Meta Dave pushing forward for glory and a beautiful shot into the UFP of another Sherman. This one looks like it was a Firefly, if I'm not mistaken, for his second kill. Now, he is the tip of the spear, where before, initially, he was in a good defensive position, ready to take the enemy as they advance. Now that he has the initiative, he is taking full advantage of it. And we can tell he's using the higher penetration pe 
Panzer Granata round, uh, the one that has 165 millimeters of pen, as the the other APHE round that the Tiger has access to has slightly less penetration, and I think it would not have been able to punch through. Oh, just a bit high there, but the enemy still facing away yet another target or is that the same m6 well let's send it back to aberdeen shall we in several pieces <laughs> the other main round that the tiger has access to has fantastic post penetration damage with a lot of high explosive filler in the armor piercing round which seems to be the main metric the gaijin uses uses for post pen damage uh, for the spalling effect of APHE rounds. You can tell Meta Dave using the view from the gunner's sight here, picking up his fifth kill already on yet another enemy who was not targeting him. An enemy vehicle that did have his tactical awareness hat on, the M42 SPAA, getting a couple of Bofors shots into the Tiger and yet this uh, somewhat early World War II design that was really intended as a breakthrough vehicle shrugging off the 40mm AP or AG whatever Duster could spit out at, at a moment's notice uh, saw no issues whatsoever. Meta Dave now collecting himself realizing he's pushed far beyond allied support is fighting a war all his own and once you have seven kills already it's kind of tempting just to push your luck and see how far you can lean on that enemy team so many side shots so many shots into people who are distracted obviously the tiger here enjoying a down tier playing with more world war ii era vehicles and less of those post-war vehicles that can make life so difficult for the tiger and yet each of these enemies uh, for the most part has the capability to punch through the tiger's armor even the m42 is it m42 or is it m24 <laughs> one of those uh even the bofors ap there we go that's that's being sophisticated for you can punch through the tiger's lower side armor from a flat angle and everything else that he's faced all of the main tanks that he's shot at here and taken down nicely have the capability to punch through the tiger from the front so again think of the tiger less as a heavy tank and more as a big fat beautiful glorious thick medium <laughs> It is a rare design to be considered a medium tank, medium rare if you will, but if you play your cards right and don't make any serious mistakes, the Tiger, not a very forgiving platform, but a very powerful one, all under the right circumstances. Meta Dave, very aware of what's going on, picking off enemy after enemy who just happens to be looking in the wrong place at the wrong time or you might say they're just overwhelmed another thing of note the tiger is not quite the beast that it used to be as again the meta seems more focused on powerful cannons with a quick reload which the tiger has uh, but look at something like the m4a1 fl10 with FL11? FL10, final answer. At <laughs> almost an entire battle rating lower, with a much higher fire rate and similar armor penetration qualities, as well as much better gun handling. Not perfect by any means. Certainly doesn't have a stabilizer like those, uh, like those privileged American Shermans. But the French autoloader very strong indeed strong competition for a tiger and a sign of the times again it's past the tiger's day in the Sun in the game of War Thunder it's not quite the fearsome opponent that he used to be but tell that to someone that gets one shot by the thing 
because what it lacks in meta, it more than makes up for in decent reload and fantastic post penetration damage, as we have all been witness to in this match. A handful of shots and 12 kills to show for it, Meta Dave of the Cone Cult doing well indeed. A match to remember. A match worth bragging about, Dave. <laughs> a match worth reminding me to make a video about. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear this, but my two-year-old has been going, Daddy, Daddy, <laughs> for pretty much this whole video because I put her to bed. I have a routine. I make it very obvious when bedtime is about to happen, when bedtime is close to happening, and when bedtime has happened. <laughs> There's never any arguing accepted, and yet much arguing is attempted. <laughs> a lot of rationalizing, a lot of excuses, and not a lot of doing as instructed but with the tiger for the german teams if you will follow the instructions on the box use good tactics get the first shot on the enemy boy can this vehicle come through for you it doesn't feel like a heavy tank in war thunder it's like a thick medium but boy what a satisfying delivery system for that 88 millimeter gun with its very punchy post penetration effect and inching up toward another triple ace at 13 kills already meta dave showing us the way he didn't push too far he pushed aggressively when the time was right and his teammates caught up to him before things got too terribly scary. <laughs> Speaking of, when a scent mark one starts turning its gun your way, that can be a little bit intimidating. Using the machine guns to see if he'd lost his spawn protection at the time he hadn't. Meta Dave pulls back wisely, lets him take a shot at another spawn camper, and moves forward, checks with the machine guns once again, picks up his 14th kill, as you do. The scent mark one, a fearsome opponent for the tiger at around the same battle rating. I think it might even be a 5-3. I could be mistaken. No, I think it's a 5-7 or a 6-0. It's a strong medium. And for good reason. The armor, probably better than a tiger's. The gun, probably better than a tiger's. The mobility, better than a tiger's. <laughs> the vehicle type, medium tank. <laughs> and putting proof to the idea that everybody can mool on you if you're a tiger and your day in the sun is well and done. <laughs> that might have been one of the first enemies to get a shot at Meta Dave. Getting around into his turret taking down the horizontal drive and most of the turret crew, but the radio operator jumps up to take over the cannon. Meta Dave wheels the chassis around, medium tank style, takes down his enemy with a single, reasonably well-placed shot. APHE is still a meme round of the game of War Thunder, and the Tiger is still a mean tank. Triple Ace by Meta Dave of the Cone Cult. Thanks for sending in your replay. I really enjoyed making this video. I enjoyed getting a chance to make it too. <laughs> it's been a it's been a long day. As for you all, this has been a long video, and I appreciate you sticking around this long. I hope that you have had as much fun watching this one as I had making it, and I invite you all to join my discord link in the description below uh, check out cone of arc on youtube i also have an interview with him from back when he was called mr steve gamer it's a little bit outdated of a title i think that's a minecraft reference and uh 
if you would like to send in your own replay, dropping your .wrpl file into the Discord chat is one of the best ways to get that to me. Anyway, catch you guys in the next video.